let's use um, let's enter the spirit of the letters through the word that was spoken to us by Pastor Sophie. I title it uh, Cast It Down Imagination. Cast It Down Imaginations. May God bless His word. And God bless his words and bless us with the blessings of today in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 10. From verse From verse 1. He said from verse 1, By the humility and gentleness of Christ. Second Corinthians. Chapter 10 from verse 1. By the humility and gentleness of Christ, Second Corinthians chapter ten, from verse one. Yes. How now are you my servants? Yeah, we are we are using KJV. Okay. Okay, let me use KJV then. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Who in presence and base among you, but being absent, absent and bold towards you. He said, Who in presence and base among among you. Amen. He said in NIV I appeal to you hi Paul who am timid when face to face with you but both towards you when weak. It means that when he's writing Sending letters maybe through to through Timothy. He writes with goodness. But when he's facing to the brethren, he's facing them with humility and gentleness. So uh what I want to pick in that part before going down is that is that it takes humility and gentleness of Christ to appeal to people. Amen. Amen. Because the reason is that you don't if you are a learners of Christ you learn You learn to 
hold on to Christ through faith. I don't know why I'm going to this scripture. Through faith and patience. So learning Christ has to do with faith and patience. Uh, that scripture is yeah, open this morning. That's Hebrews 6, 12. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 6, 12. Because one thing is that when you are learning Christ, there are some things you will, need, you will be picking. That's what he talks about that it takes the among the tongues. So we allow the word of God to penetrate in our souls among the tongues. Which means that when the word of God is going, um, it takes gentleness and meekness to see the tongues. And to maneuver yourself through the tongues. Because the tongues are to fight the world. Through the parables of the sower, you will see the Bible says the world came. Um, but because of uh, he fell on among among the tongues, they choke the world. So the the warfare is not the word is not the problem. It's you receiving the word that you need to fight. Mm -hmm. You need to fight to be able to receive the word because mm -hmm. the word is going to pass through tongues. For you can receive it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, um, there are things, the reason we are learning Christ is that there are things we must be able to identify. Amen. And address you have to identify things and handle those things sometimes warfare is not like warfare is a fight but it's not the kind of fight we we do it's a fight of the soul is a fight to receive the word, to hear, to see, because what has been, um, what we've been enjoying are those stones. So you can't just shift them from their positions and install the word of God where they've been um, living for years in your heart. So to unseat them and make sure the word of God sits is not going to be something easy. So we said, but Patrick said, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence. Wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Can you see? He said, he said, uh, 
I beseech you, means I beg you, NIV, that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people who think that we live by the standard of this world. So, uh, you can be bold to speak to like mind or like mind people because you are on the same train. Because what you are saying, they can confirm it. Uh, in their hearts. Mm -hmm. But when you are talking to people who don't see the way you see, you have to be uh, be meek and then to, to address uh, things with them. So those people that think those people that think like we are walking according to the flesh or by the standard of the flesh, mm -hmm. then I have to address them you know through that standard so that they can understand point mm -hmm. so that was what brought out of the verse 3 it said for though we walk in the flesh mm -hmm. though we live in this world and to walk in the flesh we do not walk after the flesh amen though we live in this world <laughs> though all of us are in, <laughs> in this same world amen but the kind of warfare we are talking about here is not carrying guns and sh shooting guns or throwing bombs mm -hmm. or using uh, horses and arrows. To fight like Joshua fought, like David fought. Uh, with uh, seven nations, I mean Joshua fought with the inhabitants of the promised land. This is a kind of fight that we are fighting Amen. and this fight is to unseat storms storms because when those storms are sitting mm -hmm. they are sitting Amen. in in a place or on the ground or planted on the ground that is meant for the word of God. So so we need to fight. This fight mm -hmm. is an inward fight. It's a fight that is within us. We mm -hmm. cannot see them. But we know them. You know, like you, there are some things like, like, like love. You know, love. You can't see love, but you can feel love. You can't see joy, but you can feel joy within you. So these are inward fights. And the way to. Uh, do this fighting is not with the weapons, physical weapons, 
even with the physical weapons when you are fighting with a particular Hermes or whatever mm -hmm. you are fighting to unseat them to drive them away mm -hmm. but when you first fight with them yeah. you kill them mm -hmm. you will now cast them You cast them away. Amen. But the first thing is to fight them. Praying that you are able to win the fight, the battles. Amen. After winning the battles, then you will now drive them Amen. or cast them. Amen. You will now cast them. Amen. So the way to fight, the mode of operations, the way we have to fight these tongues. Sitting on the ground of our soul is... To the weapon of God. Mm. You know, Ephesians gave us these weapons. Ephesians 6. Mm. He gave us how to fight these weapons. Mm. I will address how to fight these weapons, then I'll come back. I will um, just read through what or how to fight these weapons in Ephesians 6 from 2013. Then I will now come back to Ephesians 2. I will now come to the date Ephesians 6 from verse 10 to 12 with this Second Corinthians 10. Four to five. He said, Wherefore, Ephesians six thirteen, mm -hmm. take upon you the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. So let's really, let's, I, I, what I think I will do is I will relate mm -hmm. uh, Ephesians six thirteen with Second Corinthians ten four. He said, Wherefore, take up unto you the whole armor of God. So if you have to relate it with Second Corinthians 10 for yourself, for the weapon of our warfare are not come up, but mighty through God. Amen. Amen. This weapon of our warfare is a mighty weapon Amen. through God. Amen. Should take the whole hammer of God. That we may be able to withstand in the evil day. And after you've, after withstanding, sorry for using withstanding, I think it's a old English. Let me see. Uh, having done all to stand, KGB says, having done all. Okay. Say. So, Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. You can see. That after you've done everything to stand, mm -hmm. don't relax. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't mm -hmm. relax. Mm -hmm. 
Because many evil, 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 evil days mm. will still come. Mm. So, um, so the weapon of our warfare. This warfare is our internal warfare. Is the warfare of our soul. Is the warfare of our soul. They are not carnal. When God, when things around us is not according to the way we plan them, most times, if you are a student of Christ, What God is doing is internal. Anything that plays around you is, is, is a signal. Is a thing. There are things God is pointing to within you. Those things are, are is pointing to tongues which you have to you have you are the one with responsibility to unseat them god created man with wills and in our will is trapped with death and darkness because the will of god is trapped with light and life the will of God is full of the light of God. That is why people run away from partakers of those will. They don't want to do those things. I know some people will say, ah, well, we are not it's not a few of us that will let all God around it. It's not that she wait mercy. And we don't need to do anything. So, even that you are in Christ, to so just... <laughs> the Bible says, God is the one who is... God is the one who we... Do Yes. That's Philippians. Philippians. Is it 3, baby? Yes. <coughs> Philippians. So for it is God. That's two thirteen, sorry. Mm -hmm. For it is God which works in you, both to will. It is God that will draw you to His light. But that is what the will of God is: fullness of His riches. The riches of God has stored in His will. The tree of life in the garden is the will of God. And the will of God, Bible says, in the world was with God. In the beginning was the word, and the world was with God. He said, through him all things were made. He said, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. In the world was life, and that life, what is called life to God is light to men. The nature of God is life. But to us, it's still revelation. We still need to understand it. We still need to uh, hold it. Amen. We still need to hear that light. 
that revelation is beaming. What is beaming is what is being revealed to us. It's a revelation. Is what one thing about light? Light shine. It comes out from a source. It comes out from a source. The source is life. Or well, coming out of that uh, source, which is the life, is for us to receive the light. So it's the life of God, but to us is 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 light, is revelation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the will of God is full of the light of God, but we need to be partakers. Mm -hmm. If we are not uh, partakers of that light, we won't have what it takes to unseat. You will know how to cast down imaginations. You will know how to um uh, what about this? Efficiency system, you go back to efficiency. Mm -hmm. We will know how to withstand in the evil days. So it means that when you unseat all the tongues. This is still the evil days. So, oh, you think you can chase us out of this place? They will now come in forces. One thing that God taught me in my early stage in faith is to guide my heart. But that doesn't mean that darkness has fully left my heart or my soul. But it means that the little light that at that time I, I was able to receive, I should keep it. Because that light has unseat some that light has shifted some tones. Out of me, yeah. you know, it's like a ground. You have a ground, or you have a farm. Let's use a farm. You have a, you have a farm, and you you planted some seeds. You know, mm. or let me say you have a land, and maybe you travel for a long time, and you came. By the time you came, you saw. Tons, it's also many things that have occupied the land. Ah, what are you going to do? You want to plant some seeds. So what you will do is what? Go on the farm and begin to remove the weeds, the tongues. That, that, that is the first thing you have to do. You can't just say, ah, because ah, it's my farm. Don't worry, do Begin to put seeds like that. Mm -hmm. So you have to remove thorns, which then you now begin to plow. This is the way uh, you need to uh, begin to work on that land. Mm -hmm. So, what I discover is that even to the two uh, things naturally, if you clay a land, you don't do anything on it and leave it you travel for years by the time you come back maybe don't let me say that I will have even become a forest because you can't just leave things God is trying to tell you that your heart or your soul is not uh, it's not just to be left open something must be Something must take their place in that place. So, if uh, just like let's say Adam, Adam when God created Adam, he has a plain soul, he has a plain mind, he has a plain heart. Nothing has been uh, uh, filled or nothing has been poured in those three channels. Everything was just plain, plain, plain. You know, the heart was playing, the soul was playing, the mind was playing. You know, so 
uh, what God started doing was to what, to to form him from the dust of the ground. Um, dust means suffering. So what I'm trying to say, I don't want to go into that direction. What I'm trying to say is that okay, let me quickly say this. It takes suffering to plan things. You know, and it can be this is a soft this is a suffering of the light in a plain soul. So God still have to form him. Somebody that has a plain soul, plain mind, plain heart. Not like we that were coming from the world that wish and tongues has been have been planted in our as in darkness has covered our hearts. Just like Isaiah 6 said. He said, uh, darkness has covered the heart. He said, gross darkness, the people. So there is a heart and heaven within us. And that heart, darkness has covered their hearts. Praise the Lord. Uh, though we have physical heavens and the hearts, but we also have physical, spiritual heavens and the hearts. If the Bible can say in Ephesians 6 that, God has blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. These heavenly places, they are not this physical heaven. Even what we call physical heaven are not physical to us. Praise the Lord. You can be in concord plane or being the rocket. You discover that the more you go, the more that place is getting more far or far that is, you know, is the more the more you the the, the more height you can go with all this devices, plane, concord plane, concord plane even go higher than the plane. But let's see, let's talk about the rocket, people that are going to the moon. When you get to the moon, you discover that the space ahead of you is still long. So what I'm trying to say is that what we even call physical heavens, I mean we to use physical heavens, they are not even physical to our physical spirit, our physical eyes. But what are, we're talking about spiritual blessings. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heaven. So there is a there is there are heaven there are heavens in Christ. There are heavens in Christ. So and uh, if there are heavens in Christ and we that we are on hearts, you know, these heavenly blessings are to be transferred to us. Praise the Lord. And Bible says we make us to sit with Christ in the heavenly places. Are you getting it? It means that there are heavens in us. And if we are on heart, it means that there are heart even in Christ. Praise the Lord. And there are heart in us. Praise the Lord. So don't let us go too much in that. But what I'm saying is that uh, the things of uh, of God. And the things of men, because God will always use what we understand to explain things to us. So, the land, let's use physical land. The land, if you clear a land and you leave the land, if you come back, I'm telling you, it's not going to be the same way you left the land. By the time you come back, there must be something that or serve inhabitants the land. Amen. How are you getting it? So imagine how that has a plane, everything plain. So we still have to learn. We still have to form him to the dust of the ground. They have to form him through suffering before they can put light in him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because dust means suffering. Remember when God calls Adam, he said, those people that used to say that uh, they are dust, they are dust, they don't understand that dust is not a physical dust. He said, uh, he said, Genesis 3, verse 14. I'm 
Okay, it's verse 19. He said, By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your fruit until you return to the ground. Since from it to a taking, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. So, he said, By the sweat of your brow, that is suffering, you will eat your fruit, so it will suffer to. To have your daily bread until you return to the ground. So you suffer until you get to the ground. Since from heat you were taken. You were taken. You know? You were taken from the ground. You were taken. And you can see if you check when God formed the man, he said, um, He said, um, that's that's Genesis two, I think eight. And Lord God formed dust, formed man of the dust of the ground. Seven, seven. And God formed man of the dust of the ground. So, so between the formation of man and the ground is dust. So now here it says, uh, until you, uh, uh, you will eat your food by the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground. Since from it you were taken, for thus you are, and to thus you will return. Thus means suffering. So it means that we, uh, for us to form you, you pass through this process of the dust. Praise the Lord. Now, before you can return back to the ground, you will still pass through the process of the dust. As you pass through the process of the suffering, as in you suffer all your life. So uh, that dust is not a physical dust. We use to mold more things. Are we getting it? So now, so what I'm saying is that if you can take suffering, if you can take suffering to to form man that has a plain heart, plain soul, plain mind. <laughs> Are you getting it? You have. A, 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 a field or a land and you still have to pass through so many things and there are processes that the land must undergo before you get to the level of planting a seed onto it there's a lot you may, mo you may not know but I believe the ground itself or the farm knows that he has is passing through some things because you have to remove waste, you have to do this then you have to pour water, you have to plow the ground. These are processes, you know, before you can now put. So, and the Bible says, uh, in him was life, and the life was a light of men. So, they have to form one with a plain soul, plain mind, as in plain, nothing has been, uh, nothing called darkness or death has filled that soul. Or feel that mind, or feel that heart. That heart has not become a stony heart, and that mind, that soul, has not uh, learned wickedness, and that mind are uh, are not yet transmitting uh, evil imagination. You know, can you see? So that is what I'm saying. So, but what about we that we've learned? Wickedness, we've learned unrighteousness, we've learned the ways that seems right to us, that leads to death or leads to destruction. Now, coming out of it, praise the Lord, and the word of God is now coming out to hand to those stones. Pastor Sophie called it those stones are like maybe what we call the works of the flesh, anger. You know, fornication and all those kind of things. These are the works of the flesh. Praise the Lord. Because at that time, Adam 
and Eve, both of them, they were, the Bible called them, they, they, were, they were one flesh. This is the flesh. This is a pure flesh. Or, or let's say, plain flesh that hadn't gotten the works. So, at that time, say, a man, a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and two shall become one flesh. You know, that flesh was the, I, I won't call it pure, and I won't call it impure. I will call it plain. This is a plain man that has not walked uh, in the ways of sinners, like Psalm 1 says. You know, blessed is a man who has not walked in um, counsel of the wicked and let me read it I thank God for this utterance this is not what I have prepared anyway he said blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly you know can't you just even think once how can you walk in the council you know so walking in the council counseling is what you hear what encourages you you know so there are ungodly encouragements you know so walk on that place is you have not done it is a doing when you see walk in the bible is a doing is the doing things Amen. that have become a lifestyle to you. Amen. It has become a life to you. Praise the Lord. Say, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor seated in the seat of uh, scornful. No, yes, scornful. That is more cast. And. No, nor stand in the ways of sinners, nor sit in the seats of scoffers. You see, so these are three things that changes uh, a plain mind to hide uh, godly mind, like the mind of Christ. Or ungodly mind, like the mind of the Antichrist. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, uh, so now Hadar was a plain man. You have to form him. You know, you have to make him to suffer, to to be formed to Christ. What about we that we're coming? Hmm? We're coming from <laughs> where we've learned dates. That, that was where we we're coming from. We we're coming from where we've learned states. We've obeyed iniquity. We've grew, I mean we've grown up or we grew up in <laughs> with the ungodly. And it, these are the ways that seems right to us. And we enjoy this life very well. Now you now come to Christ. Now say you should, that your weapon is not. Uh, so it's like you want to fight against yourself. What you love doing, you know, you've loved lying. It has become part of you. You've loved gossiping. It has become part of you. Anger is is even when you are getting angry, you don't even know where that that spirit was coming from. You are just playing along with it. As in, you want to be right. You want to be right. That what you are doing is right. And anger will give you excuses. 1,000 excuses that will make you to stand on it and begin to prove that you are right. And you will fight and you want everybody to show. And when they tell you that, ah, you, you'll be so happy. Yay! You know, ah, you know, we're the world in town. Some people will call themselves bad boys. And they will be so happy. Some people will call themselves all kind of names, as that is where their power is. <laughs> you don't know what you are, you are, you are talking about. You don't know what you are. You don't know the kind of tongues we are talking about here. Hallelujah. So, 
uh, now said now you now become child of God, and born again. You know, and the Bible says whole things have gone, everything has become new, everything has become new. You know, old things have passed away. You know, and the Bible can say all things have passed away. And and you think that ah okay, well, thank God, all things have passed away. You mean my whole all my old lifestyle. But you you know that those whole lifestyle are still there. Praise the Lord. Are still there. They have not passed away. Because the Bible says uh that we should um this one scripture, let me see. Uh we should That we should put off the hood man. I know what I wanted to say, but I want to say it accurately. You know, when the Bible says you are now a new creature, all things are passed away. So all, all though everything concerning whole thing, including the whole to us is like including the hood man. So if the Bible is now saying that that you should put off the hood man, won't you be confused that but the Bible says all things are passed away? Where is this old man? Is coming from mm -hmm. you get it Ephesians 4 you know Ephesians 4 uh, okay Ephesians 6 but well, Ephesians 4 said that he put up concerning the former conversation uh, that he put off concerning the former conversation the whole man which is corrupt according to the resentful lost you should put off that conversation of the whole man. But you know that sometimes when you are alone, you will just be talking to yourself. Nobody is there with you. You are that is another kind of meditation. Not with this spirit of God. It's like you get you you just got angry now and you are speaking to yourself like you know you are speaking to yourself. That is that is you are conversing with the whole man. Can you see? But Romans says, Romans 6 says, no indeed that a whole man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. He said might be destroyed. That is for we should not have sin. Are you getting it? So uh Bible says we should put off the whole man. So won't you be thinking where do you get the whole man from? When the Bible says whole things are passed away. Praise the Lord. So now talking about the uh, tones, all this um, explanation is about addressing the tones in our soul. So let's go back to Second uh, Corinthians ten. He said, "For our uh, for the weapon of our warfare." So if I'm talking to those people who think like uh, we live by the standard of this world, now let me address. Uh, the word of God through that angle that mm -hmm. we the weapon mm -hmm. is not according to the standard of this world, it's not arrows, it's not uh, sword, it's not physical sword, it's not physical arrows, you know, it is a uh, spiritual sword. Praise the Lord, he's talking about. Uh, uh, warfare and not canal. They are spiritual warfare. They are spiritual warfare. They are spiritual warfare within us. I mean, that we're going to fight within us. And the weapon that we will use to fight them and to win this fight are uh, this weapon that are spiritual they are sp spiritual weapons you need spiritual weapons to fight spiritual battles so um but mighty to go to the pulling down of strongholds i was talking to somebody yesterday i said let me tell you the best way to understand uh strongholds i mean the strongholds as in the 
those mighty things. You know, the best way to I was we just I was just talking to somebody like it's just like a like we're joking and everything. I say the best way to understand uh, strong goals is let's use our physical the government we live in. Okay, let's say that uh, like Africa they use local governments, here they use Bogo, you know. Um then local governments then they use governors. Yeah, they use mayor, right? Then after governors, we have the senators. Yeah, they use parliament, house of parliament. Then after senators, then we have the president itself. Well, here they use the prime minister. So let's use that angle to explain. That's the best way to understand principalities, powers, rulers, and the main man itself, you know, every spiritual wickedness. So let's use, so, you know, local governments are the governments closer to your community. So that's the way to understand principalities. They are very, very close to us. They rule in our communities. They rule very, very, very close to us. Praise the Lord. These are strongholds. Those are those are the the power that hold the community. They are they rule on with the, on the affairs of that street, you know, or the community. You know, they are not in that high high place. No, they are very, 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 very close to us. Are you getting it? So principalities are like local governments. Local government houses or affairs around us. Are you getting it? Like me, I don't know where. I've never been to the office of the prime minister, but I know where the uh, borough of my community is. Praise the Lord. So, the local government, they are more like powers that are very, very close to us. Praise the Lord. So, then we we'll talk about uh, Ephesians, that's Ephesians 6. It talks about principalities. Um, Ephesians 6, where is it? It's Ephesians 6, yes. Principalities or authorities. You know, principalities. Then we have powers. Powers are like the governors. I know in my country, some people they were governors. Then later they said they want to step up. After maybe four years or eight years, they now went to the Senate. Because Senate, uh, being a senator, you are higher than governors. So uh, powers are like governors or mayors. Praise the Lord. Then uh, rulers. The one, the one, the, the, the one that is feeding, giving instructions, whatever they do, the law they place is, it will affect even the governors. So, uh, rulers are like the MPs. These are the people that set laws of the senators. Praise the Lord. These are rulers. Then, um, spiritual wickedness. That one is the President and the people who are working with the president. Praise the Lord. You can see Jesus defeated all of them until the main man itself appeared to him and gave him three tests. You know, Satan itself appeared to Jesus. So he must have defeated the principalities, powers, rulers before the main man, because that, is the, that was the target of Jesus. Because Jesus has Christ in him. And the meme might also have Antichrist within him. With him. So let's, let the two sons face themselves. And he defeated him very, very well. He just mm. used the word. He used the power of God. Mm. He used the power of faith. You know, sometimes uh, uh, you can use the word of God, like quoting the word to defeat darkness. But there are some things that you, you can't use the word to defeat. Imagine you are, you are meditating 
So permit me to use that. You are meditating on uh, in, in your mind, like you are in your room alone. You are meditating there. You've already uh, you are already sleeping with somebody in your mind. It's a meditation. You know when you are speaking alone, you are you are you are you are asking questions in the in the realm of the spirit within your heart. And they will, be, they will feed you with answers. You know, sometimes you are already, uh, you already started sleeping with somebody. It's just like you get angry too, and you are getting, and you are, and by the time you are speaking alone, they were feeding you. <laughs> you won't even know where those things, those imaginations will be coming from. But they are feeding you, and you won't know. You don't even want to care. You just be getting some ideas within your head. You know. <laughs> That is the med is a kind of meditation. It's not the meditations that you have with the word of God. But you have a meditation with the word that is not of God. It is a word that is not with God because every knowledge comes or every understanding comes with revelation. Imagine in Genesis 6 when those people they want to build the Tower of Babel. They wanted to build the Tower of Babel. Genesis 12, Genesis 12, yeah, it's Genesis 11. He said, Now the whole art was of one language and of one speech, and it came to pass as the journey from the east um, that they found a plain in the land of Shema. You can see what I said now. They found a plain in Shema and said to there, they found a plain land. No one has maybe probably no one has settled there, or it's just a plain land, you know, just like you go to some northern parts of Nigeria, you just see some lands, you know, like a desert. It's a plain, they've not planted anything, it's just plain. So just like we're talking about the plain hearts of Adam, you know, because God created Adam or man in Christ. So the only thing that can fill that heart, that soul, that mind can be the substances of the world, can be things of the light of Christ. Praise the Lord. So they said they found a plain in the land of Shema and dwell there. And they said to one another, Go to, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had bricks for stones and slime had they for mortars and they said go let us build us a city and tower whose top may reach unto heavens and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the hearts and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it and the lord said behold this people is one and they have all one language and this they began to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do that is another that is genesis 11 from verse 1 to 6 Amen. which they have imagined that is the power of imagination you know so to be able to act, what they did was was good things it's just that it's not godly it's not according to the uh, inspiration it's not that they got the inspiration from God, but they are it's good things. They just want to make names from themselves, it's just like everybody wants to build something, you know, want to some people want to die because they want to make names for themselves, you know. They just want to some people just want to do things, you know, just to make names. And they will have names, they will preach, they will talk about them forever. So he said, so he said, and God said, nothing, because they speak one language, nothing will be withheld from them because based on what they are, the imagination they able to capture. That imagination are from are, are the imaginations uh, to build a tower that will reach heaven. So it means that they saw images, images in their hearts. Praise the Lord. So, now the Bible says here, Second Corinthians 10, let's go back. He said, to, for, uh, we need this, we need the, uh, 
um, weapons of God to pull down strongholds, Amen. to pull down imaginations. Amen. Imagination, when you've imagined images and you are holding on that images or image, that has become a stronghold. To pull down that images, it can, be, it can only be a superior images that will attract you, that will make you to leave those ones. That is the only one that can help you to crack that image. Praise the Lord. It's a casting down imaginations. That is where I'm going. And every eye thing that I taught itself against, that eye thing is the fate that makes what you are holding on to stay in your hand. You know, we are there, there are kind of faith. You know, some unbelievers they have faith. If they don't have faith, they won't build your house. Some people they are they 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 discover they discover things and they will hold on to those things. Have you watched action films? And in action films, somebody will see something that is chasing. If it's an African man, he will run away, but some people they will that is when they will stand it because they believe that. I can make name for myself. If I find this thing and be able to, they will tag my name to it. <laughs> you can see <laughs> people that you see that they are discovery. These people that discover things. I don't. I've forgotten the name they call them. Those people, the reason they are searching to know the end of that thing is because they want to make me. And for them to, Bible say, Jesus say, Bible says, if you seek me, you will find me. When you seek me with all your hearts. Imagine you are now seeking to get the hand of the thing. <laughs> it takes faith to hold on things. And you want to get to the end of it. It takes faith. People who build the tower of Babel. It takes faith. They have faith. They believe they can be successful with that thing. <laughs> so they have faith that is not of God. The inspiration of that faith is not of God. It's not the faith of the Son. It's not the faith of the Son of God. It's the faith of the Son that is not of God. <laughs> you know that these two trees in the garden, both of them, they are sons, yeah? They are sons. Christ, they, one is Christ, one is Antichrist. Both of them are sons. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Tongues in your heart is a son. The word of God that came is another son. So one for one son to defeat another, it will take your permission and it takes your cooperation. So to cast that imagination, <laughs> images are already seated in your soul. Ah, my brother, it will take it will take your permission and cooperation. And every heightened, these are strong strongholds. Heightened faith. Ah. So let me tell you all of us. Uh, Teachers of the world, let me tell you, <laughs> uh, is let me tell you the truth. Let me tell you the truth. <laughs> you know, these tongues, when you are learning Christ, you are learning Christ so that you can assess things within you. You can assess things within you. And let me tell you many, many times, Satan will come. He will speak. You know, when, when the man is speaking, like I'm speaking now, you don't hear the word. What you are hearing, or you are hearing the word, but you are not, the way you are receiving the word is through thoughts. So let's assume that Satan is behind you and he's speaking. You know, another angel that is beside, or another power, or even angel that is behind or beside Satan will be hearing Satan loudly. <laughs> so in the realm of the spirit, let's say two angels are talking. They are hearing themselves, but you are not hearing them. Praise the Lord. But So Satan, maybe Satan and another kind of one of his co-workers, when they are talking, they hear themselves. But when they are speaking to you, you will be receiving those words as thoughts. Praise the Lord. So, 
when you are you are trying to unseat or shift tones in your mind let me tell you to the word of god the faith comes by hearing so when the word of god is coming is coming with faith because that faith wants to that faith is that is another is is a is god high thing from the knowledge of God. He said, cast that imagination on every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So that high thing is the knowledge of God. But no knowledge can be comprehended in you without faith. Amen. So knowledge goes with faith. Even for the knowledge, you know, somebody, I saw somebody that posted, said that, that there is nothing, this is, nothing doesn't have any meaning without understanding. Understanding is when you, you know, when you receive the knowledge, you begin to search it out, to know everything within that knowledge. That is, uh, so by the time you are searching it, you are breaking it to pieces, you know. You know, it's like, it's like you have a egg, you want to now, you, have, you want to now fry the egg. By the time you pull, you, you crack the, uh, what's that thing? Um, that scale, or what do we call it? That thing behind the, no, egg. Shell. When you crack it and remove that egg in your hand, praise the Lord. Even when the egg is still in the shell, you can see that it's still, it's watery, it has the, that, um, what's that middle thing within it? It has it, yeah, that yellow tea. But when you now spread it, or let me use, let me use a red hoy. I'm trying to use a particular. When you have a red hoy in a in a bottle, it's still strong, it's still solid. But when you pour it, let's say you pour one drop on the ground, it begins to spread. Amen. Begin to spread. <laughs> so when it's spreading, is when you are trying to seek it, you want to know what it is. So you are spreading, let's say you are the one spreading it. You know, one one drop of red hoy, it can, by the time it has finished spreading on the ground, you can see how, you know, the length and the breadth, the, the space it will cover on the ground. So let's say you are the one spreading it, spreading it, spreading it. Praise the Lord. So it's like you want to know what is within this thing. Praise the Lord. So now, when you are trying to know more, more, that is understanding. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So trying to know something that is solid by breaking into pieces is understanding. Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, 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 another, another, uh, the spirit of understanding is what Isaiah eleven call it. But Ephesians one call it the spirit of revelation. Praise the Lord. Because what you want to know, <laughs> praise the Lord, it has to be revealed to you. So understanding and revelation is the same thing. Praise the Lord. Uh, in Isaiah uh, 26, 13 or 11, 29, 11, he said, for, my, for I know my thoughts. Another verse, said, for I know my plan. Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, I know my thoughts. He said, I know my plan. So it means another word for plan is thoughts. That thoughts, praise the Lord. <laughs> if you don't want to visualize it, you will see images in it. You will see pictures in it. <laughs> it's like you have a thought in you, you are now beginning to sketch it out. You have something, you have an image in your heart. Nobody can see, but you begin to draw it out. <laughs> It becomes a plan when you get to white paper. When you have drawn what is in your heart, it becomes a plan. Amen. Let's say you want to build a skyscrapers. You know, you have a different one, different image in your heart. You begin to draw it out. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So sometimes you can use the thought in your heart to build a house. You're the only one that knows what you see. When they are building the house, you don't even know. 
But if you want to give what is in your mind to people to build, you have to draw it out. Praise the Lord. So we can say a thought and a plan is the same thing. <laughs> Just like revelation and understanding is the same thing. Praise the Lord. So, to now cast that imagination and every high thing. So it means that imagination are in the knowledge of God. The way to understand the knowledge of God. Praise the Lord. It is to be visualized. That knowledge must be seen. Hallelujah. So the knowledge of God is Christ. Praise the Lord. And the way we can behold Christ is through another person like us. Or else we will not behold Christ. That, is, that was why Jesus, God sent Jesus in flesh. A man, somebody we can relate to. You behold Christ to somebody, another man. You get, are you getting it? Mm -hmm. Christ is not a, a man. Christ became a man when Jesus acquired Christ. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So God has to say, and he said, the world became flesh and live among us. He became another man that we can see. All these why that has been preaching Jesus, preaching the word of God to them. They don't, they don't receive it. But when somebody now came, embodied the word Amen. in a physical uh, body, then we, we follow God. <laughs> you can see. <laughs> so, so imaginations need to be visualized. They need to be revealed. They need to be seen. That is imagination. That is the thought of God, the plan of God that came from the knowledge of God. Praise the Lord. So, cast that imagination and every high thing. Praise the Lord. That exalt itself against the knowledge of God. It means that we need, uh, we need to cast that imagination from the knowledge that is not of God to the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought. <laughs> Can you see to the obedience of Christ? So when you are learning Christ, let me tell you, some thought will come. Satan will speak to you. There are sometimes you say Satan get behind me, Satan. But there are sometimes that <laughs> when he's speaking himself, the way he will speak to you, you will you will, you will be enjoying that conversation <laughs> because they don't want to go. Those thoughts they don't want to leave you. They want to stay there permanently. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he said, you have to now what? You have to apart from cast them down. You have to now bring them into captivity. It means that you have to change them. <laughs> so you can see number one is what? To go and fight what? War with them. Number two is to receive grace to overcome them, to win the battle. Number three is that is now to shift them, to cast them away. So number four is now that after you've casted them away, begin what? <laughs> Don't, don't, wait, don't, don't shift them away and say, uh, to them outside the gate and lock the gate. No. When they got here outside the gate, go and chain them. Amen. <laughs> Jesus said, you cannot get to a uh, powerful house. I mean, man's with, I'm coming, I'm, I'm going back. So, uh, he said, you have to tie the strong man. Amen. <laughs> you can't get to a powerful house. You know? You have to what when you get into that house, arrest the man and tie him. Amen. Make sure you tie him down. That is where you can now have a say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, can, you can now call yourself a because you have the power to tie him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So and uh let me let me go back uh so that they can write the point down. Said so, number one is what is to see the tones. See these tones, they are not physical tones. <laughs> <laughs> they are powerful men from the pit of hell. You know? So number one is to, to, to assess the problem. That is the tongues. Then number two, the Bible is now saying get get the weapon that is not <laughs> physical. Or even the spiritual weapon you have must be more powerful than the spiritual weapon those tongues have. So get a spiritual weapon that is from God, or that is of God, 
get those weapons when you've gotten those weapons then you can now through the help not through your strength through the help and the grace of god just like how god used to help david to fight the battle you need the wisdom of god to handle them you know so uh, assess the problem uh get the weapons of god then uh you need the wisdom of god to win the battle fight them and win the battle then after that time so after that time uh you need to now after you've defeated them hmm? now say shift them away cast down imaginations no if the bible says you cast down imaginations it means that the imaginations are so much you have to be casting out one after the other. Cast them as in shift them. Cast them away. Shift them. It's just like you have uh, a plot of land, like as we say, clean land. Hmm? You got tons. <laughs> and you got wishes. Let me use that aspect to address it. You got wishes. So from by one, you do what? You 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 assess the tons. Number two, you you uh, fight them. So how do you fight them? <laughs> you begin to remove them. You know, you begin to remove them. They are weak. Begin to uproot them, uproot them, uproot them, uproot them. After uprooting them, then cast them, shift them out of the ground. <laughs> Is that not? After you shifted them out of the ground, then go and tie them. Hmm? Tie them. Hallelujah. You know, bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Means that uh, they will become your slaves. They will not become your masters. They will become your slaves. He said, having in readiness to avenge all the disobedience, revenge. So when it means after they have now, you've now tied them, you make them slaves. Slaves. God said He will not burn them until your. You will now wait until your obedience is complete. That is when we will now judge them and cast them to the lake of fire. So you that you you are still with tongues and you say god oh my enemy die 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 and begin to throw them to fire let fire upon them you are just a player <laughs> you are just a prayer players <laughs> you are just a prayer player the devil self you you <laughs> just like pass one person you say <laughs> you you will you'll be stepping on them and they will be so happy you you know you'll be punching them punching them Punching them and they will be like this. You are punching them. They are just laughing. They are just being happy. They are enjoying themselves like you are punching like you are punching them with your legs. <laughs> it is not it's not Legos. It's not like flex things. Praise the Lord. So but how do we now address this thing? Sitting down, how do you judge? How do you cast them? How do you how do you um how do you uh, defeat them? How do you cast this thought within you? You know, I don't know. Sorry, I don't plan to make this teaching long like this. But I can't just stop this flow. Because I don't know when I will come back to it. The Bible says, uh, you don't know where the Spirit is coming from. And you don't know where it's going. <laughs> like many, many uh, series of teaching that I've done. That the Spirit of God just says stop for now. It means that maybe that part three or part four of that teaching, maybe ten years that I'm going to pick them again. Maybe five years, maybe two months, maybe two days. I don't know because you don't know where the spirit is coming from. I don't know where the spirit is going. So uh, it's better I finish this teaching. How do you handle things? These things within you. You know, sometimes you get angry. You say I. Get behind me, Satan, and he will just smile. <laughs> he will even listen to you. Because at that time, 
That Satan at that time is not a demon that you can cast away. He's a spirit. He's a spirit. Is a spirit, so it's not letters. You can you can't use letters to defeat spirit. So the purpose for dealings, sufferings, is the journey of the spirit. You know, to journey to walk after the flesh, um, after the spirit. To walk after is a journey. You defeat this spirit through spiritual journeys. It is not through casting down or through uh, by casting the devil. This, these ones are not demons. They are evil spirits. They are not demons that you can cast down or you can cast away. They are spirits. They are spirits. You have to be spirit with the Lord to handle this spirit, this evil spirit. Praise the Lord. We're talking about uh, powers and rulers. We're not talking about principalities here. Even principalities itself is not even easy to defeat them. You know, there are something you can cast away through the name of Jesus. You know, but there are things that you can defeat through the revelation of the name. He said, Because some say, Because they have known my name, there is a the knowledge of the name of Jesus, and there is a way you use the name of Jesus. To cast, like command you, the name of Jesus, get out. That you can just do those ones to sicknesses and diseases. You can't do that to hunger. Hunger is a spirit. Loss is a spirit. These are the things within your soul. There are tongues that are. That are there are, there are place of uh, habitation is within you. That is their dwelling place. You can't cast them out by the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Verse 7 says, Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again. That as he is Christ, even so he are. So if you think you are Christ, we are Christ because we have journey, we become one with Christ. But in the human standard, it's not what you can think. It's not by confession. You know, it's by journey. Paul say, for though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord has given us for edification. That's it. And not for your destruction. I should not be ashamed. That I may not seem as if I will terrify you by letters. For his letters says they are well weighty and powerful. But his bodily presence is weak and his speech Contemptible. Let such an one think this that such as we are in war by letters, when we have absence, such will be also indeed 
when we are present. It means that when we are present, it is not the word we are preaching. It is the spirit. It is ourselves that have become one with Christ. That is what we can call ourselves Christ. Because we are one with Christ. It was uh, when Jesus defeated all the or passed all the all the tests and temptations or the exams in the wilderness that he can call himself Christ. <laughs> can you see? So you don't call yourself Christ by just by confession confession, you know, or by assurance. You know? But assurance of what? Assurance of what? Which faith? Is it the faith of this world? Faith from darkness. That boldness you have. Or by the faith of the Son. Praise the Lord. So, uh, to cast down imaginations, it takes spirit. So, the warfare is not kind of spirit warfare. And it is dealings, suffering of Christ that will make you to overcome and bring to the obedience of Christ thoughts that are running within your heart. Thoughts. Thoughts. So you should be able to uh, and be ready to pass through sufferings. Let me tell you that sufferings, when you pass through it, you will love it. You will love it. You will love it. Because they are is for your own edification. It is for your own strength. It's for you to acquire the light. It is for you to have the nature of God in you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just close here. Let's ask God to God help me. Help me to understand the word and become the word. The man of the word. The word was with God. This word is not just to quote. It is a being. Let me help me to become one with the word. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help me to understand the word. Not to just be reading the Bible. But to have the understanding. To seek the word. To seek the word of God. The word. The essence of God. The image of God. The power of God. The wisdom of God. So if you seek me, you will find me. Help me to seek the word and to become one with the word. Help me so that the word will be written on my mind in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, help me. Oh Lord, help me. Oh Lord, help me. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, Pastor. This word is just so wonderful. I've been really blessed by this word. It's as if I've, I've received a lot. It's as if it's just for me. But I know a lot of people have received it as well. Amen. And the teaching will be released and we decree that the word will be spread throughout the world Amen. for the glory of God. And many will receive that word and it will become seed in their heart. In Jesus' name, let's Amen. do this worship and then we will close. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we will ride upon your wings. Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, Holy Spirit, we
just receiving this word, Father God. We thank you where the the heart where you have received, you have released this word for. We pray on this platform that you will remember this heart, oh Lord. Amen. That you will remember this heart Amen. where this song was released. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Strength of the might of the Lord. 
in the mighty name of Jesus as the word has been released many 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 who are fighting the good fight of faith for the internal tone to be completely defeated you strengthen us you strengthen us at this hour you receive divine strength divine strength from above divine strength from within with divine strength to conquer the tombs for the love of God is like a lily among tombs his love wants to be absorbed in our hearts in Jesus name your love is absorbed in the heart of your people by the power of the Holy Ghost, they receive your love. They receive your love. Despite the trauma, despite the experience, despite the warfare they are fighting. But they receive your love, which is above all things. Your love, O Kati, Baro Kati, Katerava. So through the Holy Spirit, they receive it. It has been absorbed beyond the thoughts. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining. In Jesus' name. May we bless and let